hello hi guys what's up welcome back to my channel welcome back to another video my name is sam if you're new here welcome thank you so much for stopping by i'm so excited you're here it's been raining all day now the sun has popped out to say hello kind of looks like it's starting to hide behind the clouds again as soon as i start filming of course but the lighting was chef's kiss so in today's video i thought we could talk a little bit about lighting so i want to talk about plants that are often considered or labeled low light plants like low light tolerant are oftentimes if not most times labeled incorrectly the main thing here is low light tolerant is a lot different from low light loving so a lot of plants will survive at least for a pretty long period of time probably a few months at the very least in very low light settings usually and then you'll start noticing a decline in them you'll start noticing the negative effects on the plant over a period of time but not very many plants are actually low light loving there is you know some exceptions to that rule not every plant can you just throw into direct sunlight and it's going to do well you really have to get familiar with lighting and as well as your plants and what they like what they prefer um, it just seems to be like this common myth in the plant community and big box stores and even some like nurseries the sellers will label these plants no matter what they are even succulents I've seen this on they will label them low light loving or low light tolerant or perfect for a dark corner like it's like advertising the truth of the matter is though your plants might um, survive in lower light settings they're probably not going to thrive they're probably not going to be continuously putting out growth they may lose their variegation or color uh, their leaves may become faded washed out yellow sad looking your plants may also get very leggy because they are reaching searching for the light so they stretch out they don't really put off as many leaves their leaves are stunted something I've noticed it can actually look a lot like nutrient deficiency in plants whenever they're not getting enough light for an extended period of time. So I have a list of plants in my head and sitting here in front of me that I'm going to share with you guys that I think in my opinion and in my experiences um, these plants are often labeled or considered low light and I just don't think that's the case. These are all plants that have done exceptionally well given brighter light and most of them are plants that I've tried in lower light settings as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at some light loving, not low light loving house plants. First plant genus that I wanted to talk about in this video is peperomias. There's over a thousand different varieties of peperomias, which is really cool and interesting and makes me really want to start being able to find all of those different types because I love peperomias. I've always loved peperomias. There's just so many to choose from. There's more succulent leafed peperomias, kind of like this watermelon peperomia here. Um, well, her leaves look succulent. They're kind of thick, but they're not as thick as you might think. But there's thinner, finer leafed peperomias, and then there's these thicker leafed. And then we also have the raindrop peperomia. And um, there's just so many different kinds. Peperomia hope, which is a very succulent plant. It's just, it's, it's one of those plants that I oftentimes see be referred to or put on a list on Google for low light tolerant plants. I don't agree with it. <laughs> so a good way to determine how much light your plant is going to want or need is actually by their leaf. So by their leaf's thickness and density. So in general, kind of like a general rule of thumb, the thicker the leaf, the more light that plant is going to prefer. Obviously, the thinner the leaf, the less light it's going to need. Not necessarily prefer, but need. I have many different varieties of peperomia in my home. I've been collecting them for, I think, close to three years now. I just, I really appreciate them. These are two completely different leaf textures. So this one is more thick and succulent, whereas this one is more thin and kind of papery, to be honest. This is the silver peperomia frost. I have definitely noticed that my, I have two watermelon peperomias, but I've had several over the years. I've grown them from leaf, leaf after leaf and then I kill them and then it's just like this ongoing thing but this is currently my largest watermelon peperomia and whenever peperomias get thirsty like kind of like one of the first signs that you'll notice is that their leaves will get really 
um, thin, they'll wilt. Sometimes they'll lose leaves, like if they'll yellow them and drop them. Uh, if they go too long without water, they are thirsty little plants. So I know a lot of the reason some people keep them in lower light is because they dry out just entirely too fast in higher light settings. This peperomia has lived in a wide variety of light situations. And I can tell you that when it was in lower light, not receiving as much as it currently is, the leaves did turn a lot more pale. They lost that silver color and it just kind of looked like, a, it looked like a green pepper, ripple peperomia, honestly. The silver almost disappeared at that point. And the leaves were also a lot lighter, kind of like this, and less vibrant. The first year or so of keeping peperomia, I did think they were low lights. That's, I think, what Google had told me. The one thing that has been true for all of them to look their best and grow their fastest they do prefer a little bit brighter light rather than low light and low light they'll probably survive and be fine especially the more thin leaf peperomias definitely going to grow better and just look a lot better in general if you give them higher light the so next genus of plant that's oftentimes considered a low light house plant is scandapsis scandapsis pictus and i am referring to pretty well it's most of the varieties in the genus that I'm speaking of for each each plant I chose to share this one with you guys because this is a new one I've only had her a couple of weeks well I may have had her about three weeks now and um, I love her so this is a silvery Anne and I do have another silvery Anne that I've had for right at a year now she's doing really well also but I just thought this one was so beautiful I have two exoticas two silvery Anne's and then your standard like Argerius I can tell you that Scandapsis do pretty well in lower light settings, not, I wouldn't say complete low light, like low light's not going to do good, but like being pulled further back away from a window or in a room that's not as lit up as most of my other rooms, they've done pretty well and they do still continue to grow, but what happens for Scandapsis is kind of like what happens with peperomias and all other plants that don't get enough light. The leaves will start coming in smaller and smaller. If it's a scandapsis that has this beautiful silver on the leaves, which many of them do, you'll actually start to lose that beautiful silver and they'll be more of a green. They'll be less vibrant once again. So yes, scandapsis will grow in lower light settings, but um, they definitely do prefer brighter light. The brighter the light, the bigger the leaves, the more vibrant. Yeah, scandapsis are definitely, um, they're definitely low light tolerant, but they are medium to high light preferred. We have syngoniums. This is syngonium angustatum, I think. I don't think I'm pronouncing it right, but I think it's something like syngonium angustatum. This one's really cool. You often see them sold for a pretty penny um, in their mature form, which they are like a tri-leaf. They have the three points. <laughs> if that makes sense. So this is a more juvenile leaf, which is what syngoniums are typically sold as. So this one I only paid $20 for a couple of cuttings. A couple of them were rooted and the rest weren't. And I just potted it straight up. It's doing really well. This is a plant that's really loving our new home and its place in the bathroom. It's loving the action from the skylight. It's just really taken off since we moved here, honestly. Syngoniums are one of the most talked about plants when it comes to being pushed in a low light category or low light loving category. It's like so often I see it, syngoniums, low light plant, low light tolerant, um, does, does well in low light. I have actually been guilty of keeping some of my syngoniums in lower light situations, like my big beautiful white butterfly. She used to be so gorgeous, guys. Um, which I'm going to show you as an example on the screen at some point. These are all of her leaves that she has put off over the last year, living in a very low light situation. She was living in my kitchen in the apartment and she was not getting hardly any light at all. Like there was no sun anywhere around her. She was suffering. So you can see all of these leaves are very washed out and faded. They look kind of raggedy. They just, they don't look plump and shiny and, and beautiful like they normally do. They don't have all of the white butterfly variegation on their leaves anymore. I mean, it just looks rough, to be honest. It looks like it's been through it. It's just not cute. So we moved here, and then as of recently, I popped her over here in this window, which gets very good um, direct sun. Syngonium leaves tend to be pretty thin, unless we're looking at like a Chia Pence or Macrophyllum. And so I kind of was curious how bright of light they could actually handle. But I've had her living here for a couple of weeks now, and if we take a look here, these are a couple 
couple of the leaves that she has recently put off since I put her in this window and just look how vibrant they are look how much more color there is to these leaves they're just they're so much prettier so hopefully I can get her grown back out um, with some really pretty leaves and looking good again looking full syngoniums are probably the one of the fastest growing genus of plants that I have in my collection so far. Given the right conditions, giving the right amount of light and that you stay on top of their watering, they are just such vigorous growers. They're so rewarding and I love them. One of my favorite genuses of plants is Syngonium. You can see it's getting adequate lighting. So its leaves are coming in with all different types of patterns and different shades of green. Uh, I'm just so pleased with this plant. I can officially say that most all of my syngoniums are now getting adequate lighting. Next up, ZZ plants. So here we have my ZZ raven, which is doing okay. My green ZZ is actually older and larger, but I never talk about my ZZ raven on my channel, so I thought I would include him in this video. He is really pretty, you know, he looks nice. I think most of us can agree that ZZ plants are like probably the number one plant that you will find when in search of low light loving plants. It's on every single list of low light plants. Every single influencer, myself included, has probably referred to it as a low light loving plant. And most of us have probably learned our lesson by sticking them in low light. You can stick them in low light and they'll probably be okay. I mean, but um, basically you put them in low light and you have a fake plant. That's, that's the gist of it. So you might as well buy a fake ZZ plant because it's not going to grow, it's not going to do anything in lower light settings. Um, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious, it's pretty self-explanatory, but I even fell for it. I mean, at the beginning of my plant journey, um, the leaves are just, they're, it's a succulent looking plant. It looks like it is going to want a lot of light. Um, it doesn't look at me and scream low light loving in the slightest. ZZ plants have thick, shiny, waxy leaves. They have these big, thick stems and trunks where they store water like a succulent would do. Um, the succulents store water in their leaves, but the same concept. They hold on to water, which means they don't want to be overwatered. You don't have to water them very often. That is something that's very true when it comes to ZZ plants. They really can go pretty long periods of time between watering, um, which is nice, it's convenient, but when it comes to light, they really want direct sun. It's not even like medium or bright indirect light. ZZ plants really want direct sun and they can handle it because they have these thick waxy leaves that really appreciate it. This plant has been getting very indirect light now since we moved here where we're at and I'll be honest with you, it hasn't given me a single new stock, which is unusual, it hasn't grown at all because it's not getting enough light and I know that I just haven't figured out where I want him to live just yet so um, I'm gonna be moving him soon though. My green ZZ whenever it's getting good lighting it'll be putting off two three four new stalks at a time no problem easy. If your ZZ plant isn't really growing isn't really giving you any new stalks maybe consider giving it some bright direct light and see how it does. Next is gonna have to be Sansevieria or snake plants, which I understand they have been renamed, reclassified as Dracaena, but I don't think I'm ever going to be able to get on that train. Um, I just don't think Dracaena, whenever I see these, I think Sansevieria, snake plant. Plus, I don't really care for Dracaena, and I love snake plants, so it doesn't make sense in my head. This is another one that's so often <laughs> talked about and considered a low light plant, all Sansevieria. Somebody looking for a plant to like spice up this dark corner, people are going to tell you to buy a snake plant and put there every single time. A snake plant or a ZZ plant for sure. Again, mm, Sansevieria are super succulent. They have very thick leaves. Um, they're just, they're succulents. So that immediately right away tells me like, oh, hey, they're going to appreciate brighter light um, and they're going to be able to tolerate direct light. They're probably going to prefer direct light. But again, if um, snake plants can survive in lower light settings, but you might as well buy a fake plant because that's basically what you're going to have when you stick a snake plant in low light because it's not going to grow. This is my little variegated wellspin and this is actually his little baby that he just put off look how yellow it is i think it's beautiful i love how different this one looks from this one i love how tall and crazy he is 
I love it. And he's getting direct sun in this window over here. Yeah, safe to say he's happy. This plant setting right beside him. This is my bird nest sense of area. And you can see he's kind of reaching from at the apartment. He was reaching for the likes. He wasn't getting quite enough. And he's starting to finally straighten back out now because I think he's pretty content with the amount of light that he's getting. Snake plants, they'll live a long time in a dark corner, but eventually they're going to die and you're not gonna know what happened. They're gonna start declining and going downhill uh, if you don't give them more light. So they prefer it. They'll do okay for a little while without it, but they're not gonna grow. That's like the gist of like this, my whole point of this video, I guess, like all of the plants is gonna be pretty similar reaction from all of them. I have two more genuses on this list. So this is a Neon Pothos. This plant didn't do anything for me for like the first year that I had it. It really didn't grow at all. It wasn't really in low light, but it wasn't really in the highest light either. Lighting's tricky, you know? But now she is living in my little plant room under my Mars Hydro. And just in like the almost two months that we've been here, she has already started trailing. She has all these new vines sh that she shot off everywhere. And her leaves are turning neon like they're supposed to be. Um, she's much more vibrant and just much more beautiful all the way around and healthy and happy. My gold pothos I've showed you guys in previous videos. I have two of them that are very long and beautiful, but both of them have pretty well reverted all the way back to green as they were both living in lower light situations at the apartment for like the last couple of years. It's definitely a problem. I mean, I still love them. They're still beautiful, but I'm kind of like trying to give them brighter light now because I would like to see that golden come back on at least one of them because it's really pretty. I mean, they're still growing fine. I'll be honest with you. Okay. My golden pothos are still grow, would still grow fine. Like they grew a lot. Like I've had to cut and cut and cut them back over the last couple of years, many times because they get down to the floor and they're just too long. Honestly, the lower light never really affected my golden pothos growth, though it did my neon. Um, it never really affected my golden pothos growth so much, but I did lose all of the golden on my golden pothos, and the colors on this one as well were just a dark green. They weren't nearly as vibrant and beautiful as they are now. Last plant we're gonna talk about is none other than Monstera. Monstera deliciosa to be exact because I do believe that different types of Monstera um, will probably do better in different types of lighting. So I'm not gonna place all Monstera varieties in on this one like I did the others in this genus. Like I'm not going after the whole genus here. Oh my gosh, I don't know. I just, of course, had to pick this one to show you guys because, oh, she's just gorgeous. I still haven't got her repotted in her new pot yet. Though this whole time that I've had her, I've had her um, in my plant room under my Mars Hydro once again, down, you know, a few feet from my Mars Hydro, but um, yeah, she's doing really, really well. You can see she's about to unfurl this new leaf here, which I'm super stoked about. I thought she had another one, but I could be wrong. Yeah, Monstera Deliciosa. I think more people are coming to realize that this plant really does uh, want and kind of need brighter light, but I do remember back whenever I first uh, got on my plant collecting journey uh, that this was oftentimes a plant that was considered to be low light tolerant or low light you know loving which i don't even i don't like to use that because no plant is low light loving i'm sorry oh there's the other new leaf it's a little guy but um really cute i had my first monstera deliciosa at the apartment it was pretty big and because of that it wasn't getting adequate lighting i had it over in a very dark corner beside my south facing window like in the corner though so where it was getting no light off of the window at all i had stands and stuff in front of that window blocking the light taking the light so and i just kind of had accepted it like it looks like crap it's it's not giving me fenestrated leaves anymore it's giving me juvenile leaves and it was a very mature plant it really wasn't growing much at all yeah, i just had to accept that i was like you know when we move i am going to get Give my monstera deliciosa the best lighting possible like i'm gonna give her all the light because i want i just it made me sad i wanted those fenestrated leaves i wanted her to be healthy this is my beautiful monstera deliciosa this is not the one that i had at the apartment she's outside trying to recoup from bacterial issues after a year or two years of not getting any light uh yeah so this is a new one that i bought it's really beautiful and i think i'm going to repot it and set it here on the shelf to get some nice evening sun 
Um, but for now, she's under my Mars Hydro. She's very happy. Also, I've got my uh, Thai Constellation up here. It doesn't really grow at all without light. If it's in a low light situation, yeah, it just kind of stops growing for a little while. So I think that's about it, guys. Um, this video looks like it's pretty long already because you know my rambling self. But I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about lighting and, you know, I know some people might have the plants that I talked about in this video. They might be a new plant parent and the tag might tell them to put the plant in low light and maybe they have and the plant, their plants are not doing anything for them and they think it's something wrong with what they're doing and they just don't have a green thumb when in reality it's just the simple a simple issue with lighting they just need more lighting and they've been lied to so yeah let's normalize most house plants needing more light than less if you want a plant for a dark corner honey buy a fake one all right yeah thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if there's any plants that come to mind that are con normally considered to be low light tolerant or low light loving please share them with us down below in the comments because i know there's more that get that reputation see y'all very soon in my next video i love you guys bye